I know there's lots of people that been here that waste no more than me, Ronnie Ackman, <laughs> Ricky Morris, Wayne, Bud Harold, and all of them. Bud Harold, he's a he's been an obeyer for years and years, as far as I can remember. Uh, yeah, she cut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a lot of people past. In the mornings when people would take and get up and come to town to cut broom corn, they'd always meet at the ice dock or they're in front of Goodner's. And whenever they did, they'd get a barrel. The water jack would have a barrel, like this right here, and they'd have it full of water, or not full, but they'd put a big old chunk of ice in it. And they would take that, and whenever they got out and started cutting broom corn, they'd break it first. They broke the broom corn, and the people started cutting it. And the water jack would take a bucket like this and dip it in, and they had one cup. Yeah. And you went through there when it was hot, you drank, and it had broom corn seeds, it had Johnson grass seeds, it had grasshoppers, it had all kinds of stuff in it. And somebody told me one time that they had a cousin to come from a city and he wanted to cut broom corn. And he'd come out there and he cut, and that water jack come by with a cup, you know, bucket. And uh, you know, he said, I don't want no drink right now. And so he, they passed him and about an hour he'd come back and he was the first one at the water bucket. <laughs> yeah. Fred Baker. Y'all will probably remember him, do you? Yeah. He was a broom corn boss for Kent Moore's daddy and him. And uh, Kent, one time was out there cutting, and we come in to dinner, and you rode a truck like you cows. And we all got on the truck, come in, unloaded, and there was an Indian, and he was drunk. And he come up there and he asked Fred, he said, Fred, loan me $5. And Fred said, if nobody knew him, he always wore a black jacket, even in the summertime, Fred Baker did, wore cowboy boots. And he said, did you work this morning? He said, no, sir. He said, get out of here, sir. I ain't going to give you nothing. And at noon, when we got through eating, we'd come back to get on the truck, and here come that drunk Indian back up there. And he said, Fred, give me five. I worked this morning. And Fred gave him a cussing and kicked him in the rear end. <laughs> yeah. But there was a lot of uh, things went on. And when they got out there and started breaking, if there's a dew on there, boy, you'd be soft and wet. And you start cutting, and the sun come out, and it'd be so hot and itchy that it was... It was not a good thing, but I can look back now. I know there's more reason than this, but one reason was the Worcester Valley was very fertile, and that's what brought the broom corn here to start off with. And the next thing was it because of poverty. There was no jobs or nothing in Lindsay for people to do back then. I know when I started, I started cutting for 50 cents an hour for Kent Moore's daddy and grandpa. And uh, everybody else got a dollar because I didn't know how to cut. Yeah. But, you know, <laughs> that was a lot of money, though five dollars a day. You know, uh, yeah, that's better than it. And there was lots of there was lots of people that their whole winter they lived on that dollar an hour to live on it. Yeah, sure did. There was a lot of people that that people come from the largest mm -hmm. lived over at Springs and they come over here one time, and they worked there every summer. They worked for Fred and. Anyhow, they, uh, he told me that him and his daddy and his brother and his mama, they cut every day for six days a week. I guess they lived on the river bridge or somewhere. And uh, they taken, uh, they made $240 a week, all of them. And his daddy didn't do nothing but odd jobs all winter. And they lived on that broom corn money all winter long. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But it was a very hard life for most people. And, uh, but you had school money to do. And uh, there was a... Broom corn knives. I know most people know why they put this on there. Yeah. It was to keep your hand from If you take and didn't have that on there, after a while, this would rub it sore. Yeah. So this girl had a curtain arm, a curtain rod, and you could take do that, or you could use an antenna. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jim England knows he done that. But then my, I don't know where. I tried to get on the internet and try to find brand new boxes of knives. I can't find any place you get them. But they still make this. I remember about seven or eight years ago, there was a gentleman come from North Oklahoma, in Northern Oklahoma, and he asked me, there was a gentleman that couldn't speak English, a foreigner, and he was with him. And he asked me, he said, Carl, you have a broom corn thrasher for sale? And I said, no. He said, do you have any? I said, I've got some, but I wouldn't sell them. And he said, these people here, they've got 200 acres of broom corn, and they need it. They've been doing it. What they do is they cut it, and they leave it on the ground, till it dries, and then they come in there like a horse mane comb, and they comb that seed out of it, and then they go to the factory with it. But he wanted a broom corn cedar where they could take and do it, and they wanted to pay me to go over with them. I told them I couldn't do it because people give me broom corn thrashers and stuff, and I couldn't sell one. I don't know where he got one at, I don't know. If he did, get one. 
But uh, there was lots of lots of hard times during the broom corn time. Ronnie Ackman's daddy, Carl Ackman, his uh, he I don't know, uh, he told me that there was uh, whenever Carl didn't come back from Corpus Christi, Christi. Uh -huh. yeah, he said that uh, they was lived they lived out there on the river bridge for a yeah. couple of days, uh -huh. and he said that. Jerry, you remember that? Mm -hmm. He said he gave him a broom corn baler, and that's what got him started in the broom corn business. Now he said, You take them kids, you won't need to hard no more. No. <laughs> it, was, it was hard. Yeah. I guess he was the last one that had broom corn. Yeah. Connor Wall? Yeah. Yeah, we got a picture here somewhere. Yeah. Right my here kids. At the huh? Right here at the bottom. Right there. Yeah, and there's another one too here somewhere that's. That's longer. Here it is. Here it is. This is at Conwell where they was my kids and all went up there and they was cutting and thrashing. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jimmy Sheets, he's in here. Mm -hmm. He's a little bitty guy now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but there was a lot of broom corn cut here. I forget how many thousand loads of, of uh, railroad cars that they took out of here. Seemed like it's like a thousand three hundred yeah. something. Yeah, I think that Mr. Teach brought the first seat in here in 1906. And then Kent's daddy and them come here in 1907. They brought the river garden right from right here in Illinois. Ar <coughs> was it? From right here in Illinois. Is it? I thought it was Arcola, but it's not. No. But there was Scott, Harry, and Earl. Yeah. That's right? Yeah. yeah. And I think Mr. Watkins, he put the broom corn, first broom corn warehouse in Glens in 1907. Is that right? I think so. But there was a lot of broom corn that done that. But I guess that's one reason they brought the railroad into Lindsay, wasn't it? For the broom corn? I think. I don't know that for sure. But Johnny Branch, he's still got a warehouse there in Lindsay. So does Miss Holden. She's got one. For a minute. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't know if anybody want to ask something or if they know it all to do, they talk. You know anything, Ronnie? <laughs> Trumped a lot of broom corn. Yes, sir. Yeah. And if Trump. I had to do it today, I'd go be a bank robber. It wasn't all that bad. It really wasn't. No. I mean, it wasn't all that bad. It wasn't. It really wasn't. And that's how we made our money to buy school clothes. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. and let uh, me tell you, there was never a a bad broom corn Johnny that I knew or Sally it, you didn't get into meanness after you put in 10 days 10 hours <laughs> yeah. you know, they were good people yes you know. I know it and there's people off under all of the river bridges mm -hmm. that was uh, they stayed under there and I never did hear very many people that were getting in fights or no, killing no. each other <laughs> you don't tell something yeah, yeah I don't it's tell. Like is now back then there wasn't many trucks right here at Lindsay Roy Swedford had four or five of them it took four men to go out in the farm and put a bale of hay on the back of the broom corn truck. It took four men to have more houses in town. We'd stack, I worked for Royce Swinford, Herb Swinford, and we'd stack them four, 500 pound bales yeah. up above them rafters. Four men. One on each corner. And when the men up hollered high, all four of us come up at the same time. And we just kept uh, going up. What did it weigh, Jim? Huh? What did it weigh? Four or five hundred pounds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and we loaded them box cars left here for years, and tr trains and even trucks would haul them out of here. Took four Who minutes. invented the wheel that formed back of the truck? I did. You did. Yeah. I did you get a patent on it? I should have. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I took pictures of all of them. Yeah. 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 But I, I enjoyed it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Mr. Swinford used to live down there where your, uh, what, where y'all's place is at now? Was that where oh, you live? Know. What did Jim? Well, Hurd lived in down the southwest corner there, Lynch, out on the corner. I thought one of them Swinfords lived down there where Fred Davis was at. Uh, yeah, Roy did. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah, he, all Roy done was sat around the trip, sat around the chair backwards. He was bigger than the barrel. And he just give orders. And paid cash, and got paid every Friday, and you was broke Monday morning. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we also took all that lumber out of boxcars and parked it on the railroad there. We'd take all that lumber out of there and stack it over Gordon White and 
One time had four or five lumber yards here. Yes. And Roy Swinford done every bit of it. Yeah. Or his trucks did. And they'd come in here pro, water run down the bottom of it and everything else. And had all the boxcars full of sand blocked and gravel. We had a little bit of hand. A little bit there. Yeah. yeah. I was the trailer there for a while. We made black talk out of it. Yeah. Put it all over lazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Alvin or the plain one was a straight man then back then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He was when I worked for the city. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But anyway, it's a lot too, that broom horn and everything. I done everything to broom horn you could do. Uh, help raise it, my dad raised it, cut it, rake it, bail it, made all kind of brooms out of it. Andy and the company come in here and made brooms. I was first in there to hire back in the back. And I worked from the bottom all the way to the top. Made every kind of room that could be made. What year did they start that, Jim? Oh, something the 60s. 60s? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And anyway, we even made house rooms over a trend all over one. Me and Ethel Culver's used to make rooms over there. Her name was Ethel, you know. Yeah. Boy, we'd be by it making this as quiet as a mouse. I thought, hey, Ethel. Everybody's get them clothes on. <laughs> 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 you're not my shoe, but you're crazy. <laughs> yeah. so I got everybody's attention. Yeah. <laughs> we made fun out of it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll sit down and let you go ahead and talk. I don't know if anybody, whatever anybody wants to talk about. Rodney Smith there wants to talk to you. Come on. I may not ever shut up. <laughs> Well, they can leave it when they're ready. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, we had bailers. Yeah. I mean, a lot of people don't realize what them old bailers, but you press that bail up, and that, that broom pump was so tight in there, you opened the door on that bailer to tie it out. You used five wires. And when you open that door, it better not be nobody in the way because yeah. they're going to be decapitated. That thing come around and slap the back out by you. <laughs> and some people will blow the top out of them bikers. <laughs> but, uh, you know, we may have weighed four or five hundred pounds, but when it hit the ground, <laughs> you put a bar in the back to get it out and a hay hook, a long hay hook to pull it out. And when it hit the ground, everybody got behind it and kept it rolling because it was square. And once it stopped rolling, it was hard to get it started again. Yeah. But, uh, we bailed. I started running a bailer when I was 12 years old. It wasn't called the one to. But uh, Daddy had bailers way back there. My grandpa Johnson had bailers. And uh, I've done a lot more than I wanted to. But old Ronnie's daddy and my daddy, I think it was in 67. An old boy come down here named Ed Wrigley, and he was the heir to the Wrigley Chewing Gum Force. And they sold him a broom corn baler and an old flasher and delivered it to Buckeye, Arizona. And while they was out there, I think it's February, they showed him how to plant broom corn. Well, right before broom corn was ready to harvest here, we load up, and an old Chevrolet pickup with cattle rights on it, and tied broom corn water up on the side of it. And we get out there, and out here, everybody getting a dollar an hour. Well, he paid us all their expenses out there and back, furnished a motel room there where we're staying, paid all our eats. And the kids got five dollars an hour. The, the grown ups got seven. So we stayed out there seven days cutting dwarf broom corn. We break it over the saddle and lay the broom corn in there. And when it dried out, we hauled it in there, thrashed it, and bailed it at the same time. Now that thrashing was kind of a dirty job, but that bailing was like an old day thrashing job, only a lot dusty. <laughs> we had an old feller that had worked for my granddad for about 40 years, and he went to Arizona with me. And he made that $5 an hour for that week coming back. He said, that's the most money I've ever saved in my life. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he had, he had a pretty good little walk there. Yeah. But, uh, when was that? And also, after, after, that, seven, I think. after that, then they would bundle it. Yeah. And they stack it out there, and you could go in there and cut room for it all winter long. <laughs> and you just save the string, and you got eight cents a bundle for, and then they'd, after that, they'd bail it. Uh. 
But anyway, Laura Landers, y'all all might remember her. She worked for his grandpa, Carl Johnson, baling hay, yeah. and they called her a piss ain't. <laughs> <laughs> she got 10 cents a bale for piss ain't from the room park shed to the baler to the bales, you know. But you budgeted that bale for you got to start. <laughs> I mean, when you hauled it in from the field, you laid it on that table, you budded it. Three guys budded it. Yeah. Come out of that thrasher, you grabbed it, you budded it on the barrel walking, you budded it when you got to the shed, you put it on the broom corn slats, and then when you went to bail it, you got it off them slats, you budded it on the barrel down the store. Did you ever buck it? Did you ever buck broom corn? I bucked it, I yeah. pissed on it, I yeah. done it all. And I said, cheers. <laughs> I probably got a lot of whooping when I was about 10 years old. Remember to get your big head, get your head. And two heads? Make it a lot bigger, a lot yeah, bigger. See right. how much you could carry. And that old boy at that cut, cutting table just chew your butt out. Oh, yeah, they didn't want you following them. Crooked piles. Yep. <laughs> but they had them old tables you worked. Most of them was just sheet iron. And they'd both sheet iron nail, nails and work up through the top. And somebody would run, run a nail under their fingernail. Yes. Well, here comes the claw hammer. They shut down for a few minutes to me and be shooting dice. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> hey. We're in the yeah. stall. Yeah, I've seen them guys lose their whole day's wages shooting dice. Oh, yeah. Crazy. You Jeez. know, you could buy Levi's for six bucks, though. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you could buy all your school clothes. Cecil used to have an old broom corn baiter sitting up there on the, by the road, and I was wanting it. And I come by there one day and I had Cecil. I said, Cecil, what do you think about it? Broom corn baiter, he said five hundred dollars. And I said it's all rotted down. Why would you want to? You know what rotted it? Be right. kind in it. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyhow, he wouldn't go down and I end up yeah. and Alan and Brian, my grandson and I redone it. That's what we bailed our broom corn with. And you know that was a short little biter, but when we dig holes and drop yeah. them tars yeah. off because once you shut that door, that thing is a lot taller. Yeah. And you have a usually a girl. Standing on a little, you had a little board. catwalk or board yeah. there, and she'd hand it up to the coffer. Yeah, we grow food corn. My dad did back in the 40s, and Paul Dimmage, you'd see him coming from a mile. He'd take the bed off the little wagon, and take them mules or horses and pull that baler on over it, and he'd drag it there, and boy, he was worse on us than Mama Dimmage. Yeah. You know, had a great big old log out through there, and that hook onto that log hole with the horses yep. and pulled it up there and drop a pin in it. Yep. Then you'd get the old bail and you'd pull that pin in and the horses go back there and rest until yep. you got it loaded. I've got two of those bailers. Yeah, yep. yeah. I got a question. Tell them about the broom corn that the first come in the season order. Was it worth more? Well, yeah, usually the first crop brought more for time. Because in 1950, my grandpa Smith took off in his pickup to bring him a farm where he could plant earlier. He wound up in Dilly, Texas. And, and the first crop done good, but in 1953, they never got a rain down there all year long. And uh, he sold the crop, but the stock field to load boy that owned the land to run steers on. And he broke even, he loaded up everything and headed back to Oklahoma. <laughs> Old Shirley Ketchum over at Elliott. Her mom and daddy moved down there. And that, uh, Grandpa bought an old airplane hanger that had blown away, made out of sheet on it. Well, they knew Fanny and them nine kids were coming, so they built on the house out of sheet on it. The first night there come a hailstorm. Well, Fanny the next morning had them kids out there digging a cellar. <laughs> Grandpa told them, where'd you get in that cellar? The rattlesnake's right probably like, get all it off. <laughs> they stayed down there. And, that, and this is kind of, well, I'll try to make it quick. But in 2000 or something, Daddy had always wanted to go back down there. I load him up and we go to Dilly, Texas. He said, I'm going to show you this house we lived in. We go six miles west of Dilly, Texas. We can't find this house. Daddy said, turn up this road. I turn up that road. We go up there, make a 90, go a little ways, make a 90. There's a cement watering trough with a windmill. He said, old Johnny and Fanny live right there. We come back out, go back out to the highway. They said, that house is right over where I'm sure. Well, we turn around and go back up there. And all he see guys under this little bitty shade tree eating his lunch. 
So he said, pull up and ask him about that house. So I asked that guy. He said, that house was never here. He said, I've been here 40 years. That house was never here. You're mixed up. <laughs> so we take off, and the guy backs out of the house. They said, turn around and stop that guy. So I turn around and I stop that guy. Daddy asked him about that house. That guy said, well, right out there across the highway, he said they bulldozed it down two years ago. Oh. And Daddy said, well, did you ever know an old man lived down here named Elm or something or another? And that guy said, well, uh, why are you asking? He said, well, he used to haul equipment down here. We lived down here in the 50s and raised broom corn. He said, my name's Cecil Smith. That old kid, he went to cuff and he backed up and looked in there to pick up his daddy. He said, I've heard about you damn Smiths all my life. <laughs> 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 he said, not meet none of y'all. <laughs> then we talked to him. He said, don't pull up over that windmill is and get out and walk around. He said, I own that. Do what he's going to do. Well, I tell old Shirley, with his daddy's funeral, Shirley Ketchum told me, me and my sisters, they're going to San Antonio for a cousin reunion. And said, we're going to go down there at Gilly and see if we can find where we live. Mm -hmm. I said, Shirley, when everything kind of quiets down, I'll bring you a map over where we're going to find it. So I go over there. And old Shirley lived at Ellick, and I was Google Earth her map. Me and her sat at the kitchen table, and I showed her right where she lived. I showed her that cement water drop. She said, yeah, I had a little duck, and I was in there swimming. I got out, and I stepped on my duck and killed it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I said, would you tell Betty and Jane and them that I brought you this map? She said, I ain't going to tell them nothing. She said, I'm going to act like I'm remembering all this, and then I scream. <laughs> you. <laughs> you know, they went down there. She called me when I got back and said, we found the old man that moved us back to Oklahoma because her daddy stayed down there and worked for another year or two. Mm -hmm. But said, you know, he was a real young guy when he moved us back here. <laughs> and said, you know, we didn't realize it when we were young like that. But said, I don't think he's ever right in the head. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of history in that room. I'll show yeah, you yeah. let somebody else talk. Yeah, you know, when they first come in here, it was all standard. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, why well, I tell you? Yeah. yeah. And they made big house rooms and shop rooms. And they got a long head. Yeah. 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 And it, you ain't heard nothing. You hear about 30 or 40 men breaking that room corn. Yeah, it's just wide. Yeah. You can quite hear that room corn to pop in. Yeah. It was a pretty sight. When you broke them tables, they crossed yeah. over yeah. like this. Yeah. The women and kids, they'd be cutting while us men would be breaking. Yeah. It'd be just as pretty and level as that table right there. You'd yeah. see a flag once in a while, and the old boy would run the field and jump on you. I won't ever miss that from yeah. Yeah. you. When you cut, you, went, you didn't butt the heads, you went in the side yeah. that you were yeah. talking about. But you had you had two off rows, on, two arms, two off, two yeah. on. And the wagon right, went right down the middle of it, yeah. up on the off on rows. Each side. And you piled your broom corn on the on rows. Yeah. But uh, you know, he ain't all that ever cut on the table of broom corn. But that's the best thing they ever done when it went to that next broom oh. corn, when you cut it standing up, it didn't go down, and yeah. store yeah, that all that yeah. But if you was two of you right handed. One of you was walking back yeah. on that table of broom corn. Yeah. And the first time you backed in the bull nettles, mm -hmm. you were very cautious the rest of that day. Yeah. Yeah. You'd almost jump over that table. Yeah. You know, I don't probably remember Ernest Parker and his wife. They were the out yeah. and raised it. I said, Did you ever see a left handed Johnny, Johnny, man, a woman? Oh, yes, there it is. I said, Will you just switch hand? It's the right hand to that. She said, Be out there and blow about that. That's what it was, yeah. Yeah, I'll tell you, the broom corn also, oh, it didn't like a lot of water. Mm -hmm. You know, it needed the drought, but if it come a rain, just as the head started coming out, it would make a crook. Well, that was the only crop you could have. Plant it grow, and you have money in the bank by the middle of July. That's true. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Was uh, Lindsay known as the broom corn capital of the world, or just Oklahoma? But there's four places in Oklahoma in the United States that they claim to be the broom corn capital of the world. Yeah. Our Cone, Illinois is one of them. Yeah. And there's another one in Oklahoma and then us. I don't know what the evidence is. Yeah. yeah. But there's four different places that claim to be 
the broom cone capital to work on. But then people come from all different directions in here and work all summer to get here from. <laughs> Most, a lot of them was drunk. So I, mean, I hate to say it, but there was. Vacation for them. Yeah, that's true. I think our town motto was, we sweep the world. I, I remember seeing yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. used to be on the Lindsay newspaper, said, we sweep the world. Room corn capital of the world. Lindsay room corn. Yeah. Back then, there was plenty of hands. There'd be four or five trucks just loaded down with room corn jollies going all different directions. Yeah. yeah. I can still hear old Fred Banger holler, Lola boy! <laughs> what did they say? What did they say when it was about four o'clock? It's time to, to thrash. Fred Baker and him would always say, "Let's let's make ice cream." Yeah. <laughs> let's make ice cream. Let's make ice cream. Time to go thrashing. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, it was a, it was a standard ass. Well, you know, we bitched a lot more then, because yeah. you could cut rubber off the land and just talk about anything you wanted, but now then they got cell phones, TV, radio, kids yeah. can't even enjoy life anymore because they're on a cell phone. Right. <laughs> I've heard them say that Pete's told that Ben Denson was always the first one to bring a bell broom coin in. Is that Who? Ben Denson? Ben Denson. Do you all remember that? Uh, you remember? It'd be on the it'd be on the Lindsay News and it'd say, Ben Denson, he done it again, the first one in the broom corn field. He's got his crew in there, Fourth of July. Yeah, I'm talking about me hauling broom corn. Mm -hmm. It took four men to do it. Rufus Sutton had a an old Ford truck down there across the levee. It had this bed on it and everything, and I got to thinking I rigged that up, put me a cat head on it. Mm -hmm. We'd be roping it. Mm -hmm. Anyway, L.D. Miller and his Freddie and Lottie was down there and got into a Royce Winford because Roy was supposed to haul their broom corn and he was to me, I'll haul it so and so whenever I can, cuss it a little bit. And I says, Mr. Miller, I'd like to haul your broom corn. Son, you can't haul that broom corn. You ain't big enough. I said, if I can't haul it, you can get Roy to haul it. He said, well, come on, let's go see. He had 80 bales in there, a story. Mm -hmm. I took my old truck with skid. I went down there and I loaded the 20 bale on the back of that truck by myself. Took it down and loosened hemp, weighed it, and I didn't. He said, you can just hold my room on now. <laughs> <laughs> well, didn't George Holman have one there? He one up after yeah. I did. Yeah. But anyway, later on, I got to load my truck and Roy's trucks. Yeah. Also, it just took one driver and me. Yeah. But I had a long skid, but yeah, two inches. Slide on. I'd slide it up there, and I'd get yeah. five mil here, five over here, and I'd raise it up, five over here, five over here, yeah. and I'd put four on top. Yeah. yeah. Made it a lot easier, didn't it? A lot easier. Yeah. The old 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 first you didn't ever have to go flat. <laughs> you had to go to the <laughs> Yeah, and lay it flat. You didn't stand it up, you laid it flat. Yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> good. <laughs> but also, Johnny, he's got one of those, and I've got, she does too. One of the old bailers that goes inside the warehouse, mm -hmm. and that way when they break a bail, they I used, do it. I used to make my spending money here on Saturday, two dollars a bail. Two dollars a bail. Yeah. Yeah. Crank, 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 yeah. crank. You don't have a motor, you crank it by hand. They call them with bailing monkeys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I call them on these bails, you know. Yeah. The buyer would go out there and he'd pull here, and he'd pull here, and he'd pull here, and he'd take it there, and then they'd... Yeah, rebail it. You had some little bitty bails, little bit. When they hauled it in, yeah. but that was monkeys. We bailed them monkeys up. Yeah, I always thought it was a busted bale that they redone, but it wasn't. It was monkeys. Uh, monkeys. Yeah. Well, you can't. You couldn't figure that every bale would come out to four or five hundred pounds. You just maybe you just had a two hundred pounds left. Yeah, yeah. And and you'd ask you, you know, the buyer'd ask you, say, how many how many bales you got? And you'd say, well, I've got sixty bales and a monkey. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it was tough. But the worst part of every bit of it was sacking them seed. Yeah. They'd get down your neck yeah. and everything else. Know. They were worried. They were worried. I know. Yeah. Well, I'll send that. <laughs> that group one was a very, very tough deal. Johnny gave me one here the other day. You know what they call, Jim? You know what they call them little dollies that you uh, haul it with? You used one of them many, many times. You know what they call them? It took four of us men. And when you got the type, we get that deal, all four of us. Hope and poke yep. and poke like bail went in that old big truck, you know. Yeah. Yeah, you, truck. you know what they call? Truck. Dolly. 
Trust. It was a dolly, like they used a feed store, but it was a dolly, but they called it a truck. Yeah, they called it a truck. And they were from You went 200 mil. Boy, I had a big old mail one time, and I pulled back, and he got on my toe, and I still got the evidence. How many warehouses was there in Lindsay at one time? Five, six, seven, eight. Oh, that's all over town. Yeah, there's one across from uh, that neighbor's well, isn't it? And she's got one. There's about yeah. 10 or 12 of them. I think there was. Now, Bush and Kemp had that great big yeah, city well, uses. Just, they're on Brimcorn Street. They yeah. On Brimcorn Street. Yeah, they did. I got a year from one. They were out here for making Brimcorn Street and still with us. Yeah, yeah that's true. Did. <laughs> he did. Yeah, I got his name, Brimcorn Street. It was just, it was just called that. Yeah. It was really East Choctaw Street. And when I was on the city council there one time, I, I got together and we renamed it officially Brimcorn Street. Yeah. We had a little yeah. hole in the wall there. John Austin Trammell had it. Yeah. You could hire any kind of hand down there you wanted. Yeah. Just a open place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't care what you need to go in there, and there'd be somebody that could build, fence, drive, tractor, rodeo, wrestle cows, yeah. home. Yeah. You could get anybody to get any kind of hand down there you wanted to get. How come they never did that? They didn't ask you what you paid. They just took what you they yeah. gave you. How come they never hold from corn? They did. I've never seen anybody do it. I yeah. 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 Uh, did you you did? <laughs> I've never seen anybody in whole room going. The big group was better than the week. The head was better. The hurl was better. You know, if it was real thin, it won't be the strongest. The head would be that long. Yeah. You didn't want that. They put about 85 or 90 seeds to the 16 feet, I think that's what it was. Yeah, right. Yeah. It's making it up if you're smaller than that. Yeah. Yeah. Flanders. Yeah. We used to we used to hold uh, Do what? Come here, Rick. Come no, here. I'll come up there. We used to hold broom corn and the guys working for he had his daughter was working with us out mm -hmm. there holding broom corn. We had a lot of Johnson grass in it. Well she was she was cutting down all the broom corn and leaving the Johnson grass. <laughs> 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 it, it resembled Johnson grass. So. Yeah. 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 Part of the bundle come yeah. and then leave the boot on yeah. that. Bed. You don't do that. And that's a no no. Oh, no. Yeah. The bundle goes right. You yeah. pull that, let that knife stand still, and you yeah. pull it, and that way the boot yeah. stays. Yeah, you jerk that stump on the head. Yeah. You didn't just cut that's it off. That's the boot on there. Yeah. I know, but they the boat didn't boat. like it either. But now, they also had a knife that was twice as long as this. And they used it for bone cutting. Right. Yeah. This one here, if it was about this much longer, then they'd drive it. I've had both kinds. Yeah. Yeah. They was, uh, they was. I remember Kent Moore, I was working for Fred Baker one time. And man, I don't know how come I ended up on the road with him, but he was having on one side and I was cutting on the other. And he had a real good looking sister named Christine. And I got to talking to him about her, and he said, Carl, I think we come here to cut broom corn and I'll talk about my sister. <laughs> You talking about Harry Moore, the senior? Yeah, and I had a brother Hall. He was three years older than me. Daddy took him, him, and anyway, Daddy was buying full, getting full check, and Hall was getting half check. Mr. Moore came by there and see what was happening. He just put that boy on full course because he cut the smoke. Is that right? Well, that's what I got fish since now when I started. Yeah, he, old man Harry, give me 50 cent rights. I remember his grandpa was on the back of the truck. Fred Baker come by there on that, and I was cutting room going. Hadn't been a cut in just a few days, or maybe that day. And I, I would be put me on the off row, left handed row, and I was cutting right handed. And Fred told me, he said, son, put that knife in your left hand and cut that left handed. And I said, I can't cut left handed. And his grandpa was standing on the back truck and he said, Hell, he can't even cut right handed. His <laughs> friend <laughs> told him, he said, You don't want somebody to cut right handed, learn how to do that. <laughs> Where'd you meet Kathy at? Huh? Where'd you meet Kathy at? I was at the friend of Jordan on two mile stretch. And I was slower than she was. I never knew her. But anyhow, I was cutting out there. And here comes some people, some. To help us out, yeah. And my wife, that was, she was uh, cutting on that road. She helped me out, 
And I never seen her again until that fall in the Walkin Theater. Bobby Heron, he was kin to her and introduced me to her. And the next June, we got married. That lucky time when you got cut out, you came around and helped others out. 56 years later, yeah. You know, that I talked for a many a year, and one thing he wouldn't do, wouldn't let you work on Sunday. He wouldn't? <laughs> well, didn't your grandpa, did he get killed in that six mile bridge? Or was it dirt your house? Right off the river. I got the old home place. The old home place where your son lives? Right. Yeah. But they call the men Johnny and they call the women Silas. That's right. That's true. Right back to the iron back to the men. He didn't, but he did hurt the last. He wouldn't allow no women to work with him. Yeah. There's the last when Harry gets bad breath off. Wouldn't flash it the roof on shed, they flashed it out in the field. His name is Harry. Yeah, that's a Yeah, I worked on that one time. For two days, I worked on that. They flashed it, they put it right back on the table. You know, they tell me that, that Mr. Uh, Burford is one that built it, North Maisel. Yeah, anyhow, I talked to one of the guys that worked there a long time ago. And he told me that uh, Mr. Burford had two sons and they didn't get along. Yeah, yeah. And they said that uh, that uh, one of the sons that ended up with the broom corn thrasher that thrashed in the field told two of the guys who worked there to take to the river bridge or take to the river and cut it up throw it the river. Uh, they would all say the one that made the tie on the John Deere Baylor. Yes. And on the bread sacks. Yes, that's true. Yeah. 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 Burford. Now they also. It was invented for the hay bailer, but mm -hmm. they converted it to tie. Bread. Bread. I mean, not bread, bread. Bread well, they tell me that Burford invented a broom corn cutter that went in the field and cut it, but the heads, the stalks was uneven, yeah, you couldn't do it. I remember that. I didn't I never seen it. Too uneven. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what it was. I've seen it. I wonder why they didn't do it on the dwarf corn though. It was too late. Well, it's probably still been a lot of waste because a lot of it's up today. Depend on the ground how that yeah. how it grows. Well, I guess that's standard. Problem. Huh? It wasn't a bigger crop anymore. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. It went up. Yeah. I don't know how long, how, how tall did that standard broom corn get? 12, 15 foot tall? Yeah, 12 foot tall. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's tall. Yeah. 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 It was hard to break. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it was hard to break. Yeah. Yeah. You grab it and you push it. You grab it and push it. You yeah. grab it and push it. You didn't break it. No, you, you didn't push it. Push it. That's you right. grab it and push it. Mm -hmm. But both the people that knew how to do that, like he said, he could make a beautiful roll. And you just roll. Yeah, you can you walk just roll. Right. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. What, I, don't know how, I don't know how the guy that brought the water to you, I don't know how he got across from sometimes. Well, they usually made a halfway through the deal and make a crossing there, you know. Mm -hmm. In fact, I used to have a room for it out there in Colorado, you know, that half mile, a mile roll. Yes. They make just it. make a roll across through mm -hmm. the middle, and when you got there, you get your drink right. and you go on. Yeah. Well, didn't out there on 59B at one time, didn't they, there where that plant was at, didn't they have a mile road through there at one time? Oh, Nelson had that place. Earl Nelson. Earl Nelson. Yeah. Seems like I cut out there one time and it was a mile long through there. Yeah. Well, it's a long ways from you well, do that. there in Colorado, there's be sections of it. Yeah. didn't have no 40 acres. Yeah. There a whole section. <clears throat> it doesn't have sure dry cow out of that cup for you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they wasn't no plants. No, I, I tell you about that guy that come from the uh, from the from the uh, uh, Oklahoma City, and one of the guys had a friend that he wanted to come and cut broom corn, and he did that. And the first time they brought the water by there, that boy he would do it because of drunks and yeah. snuff and stuff. <laughs> and he didn't take a drink. No, he said, "I'll wait." So the next time he come by, he was the first one to get the drink. Out. He, he didn't care. Hobbs Kelly come up later on, and that wooden barrel all had a faucet down here at the bottom. Really? And then they get down there. Well, he didn't have that room for it. Yeah. Yeah. Gosh. I, I figured, I remember old Clay Lawrence, he, done it, he just dipped it down in the top of it, you know, he didn't, he didn't do it at the bottom. He was Fred Baker's uh, water jack. Miss Paul knows. Growing uh, room corn, was it? Because they started producing the online brooms? Yep. Yeah. No, they're all. I would answer that for you. There was a couple of things. Uh, one was about 72 was the last big crop. Yeah. There was a few hang on there. Mm -hmm. They wouldn't. But, but the oil field got big. 
Took and you were making a dollar an hour, yeah. and I think it finally went to a dollar and a quarter an hour, and then all of a sudden you can make five dollars an hour. Yes. Yes. And all the all the men went into the oil field, yeah. and, and then you didn't have the hands. <clears throat> so the fact that there never was a machine invented to cut it, and and when all the hands got better jobs, making more money naturally, yeah. you know, you, you couldn't get it work. No, you couldn't, no. And the other thing that happened at the same time, and I was telling Carl about this, was soybeans sort of come into this country. And uh, I remember in 73, they brought nearly $10 a bushel, and you could harvest them with a combine. Yes. And everybody just planted soybeans because yes. you didn't have to put up with the, the, labor, the labor deal. Yes. Yes. And that was sort of the beginning of the end. And yes. it ended you know, right uh, tax beans is coming out too. You know, everybody, farmers, all paid cash every night. Every day. Every yeah. night. Every, every night. night. Yeah. And it got to where you had to hold taxes out on them. Yeah. Give them over $600 if you had to give yeah. a W 2 for them, you know, and that's how they knocked all that mm -hmm. business ahead. Mm -hmm. I know some of the farmers got in trouble. They didn't make the landers for us because they didn't keep records and the tax Nobody people got a hold of them. <laughs> and they had to come up and get yourself out of it because I always paid cash, cash, cash. Mm -hmm. and, and it's the same way every year to year. The pay right. come in here and make ten, twenty thousand dollars on the truck seat. They pay the farmer cash for his hay and everything, and they find out they put a stop to a lot of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Was it just for brooms and broke, or was it something? It was a broom. Yeah. It was brooms. Yeah. Most people didn't realize that during World War Two. Broom corn is coming out of Lindsay and these other places. The big volume of broom corn is going in the bottom of ships. Is that true? For insulation? Was that true? Ballast. Yeah. Was that what it was? Yeah. I didn't know that. a lot of broom corn to, to put ballast in the bottom of the river. Right. I didn't know that. I <laughs> didn't have a phone back then. No, no, well, I'd have heard, but I don't know. Did they did they use that at one time for insulation too or not? Yeah. yeah. That's what I've heard that they did that. Yeah. I've heard that they grabbed it. Yes, ma'am. How many sallies do we have here? Broom corn sallies. Broom corn sallies. That's true. How many of you guys like button those heads? Let me tell you about that. They tell you they cross those tables like this. Every once in a while, when we were cutting, we had to cut against those. Not you usually cut with them. Believe me. They poke in the ribs and everything else. It's well, not. You probably got the oldest out of here. <laughs> no, we're not. Miss Cunningham was yeah, in here. I got her. Well, yeah. She yeah. got you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're 65 years. I bet Miss Cunningham, I bet she started out when she was very young, didn't you? Very young. What was your daddy's name? I don't know that. My, I was a Sinclair. You know. John, John. John Sinclair. Sinclair. John. You know, while everybody's here, I'd like to know, I, I wondered who your field boss was, Fred Baker. I started out with him. Did you really? I, I knew where he lived. You know, he did Sea Chapel, Pike Speak. I didn't yeah. know how far. Yes. France Kimbrough was the last field boss we had, and he was from Cox City. And Rush, we were formed on Rush Creek, Caleb Lindsay, Don Howell, and Olin. Yes. Uh, Burl Beck. Burl Beck was yes, the boss. Yes, Burl Beck. Yeah. Now, who else? I, I'd really like to know the bosses. Bill Henry. Bill Henry. Bill Henry. Bill Henry. Bill Henry. Yeah, Bill Henry. Yeah, Bill Henry. Woods Martin. Woods Martin. Woods Martin. Martin. Yes, sir. Yes. Yeah. 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 John Bell. Yeah. 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 Who is it? We used to raise room corn on Rush Creek at Purdy. Yeah. The wall. Yeah. The wall. Tommy Perkins. Yeah. Tommy Perkins. I'll try it. I'll try it. Ron Berger. Her daddy is up behind you. Joe Southern. He was a broom corn boss. Oh, is that right? Yes. Well, <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, I thought it was somebody else. Oh, Pearl Beck. Was Pearl Beck one? Yes. Yeah. 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 Pearl Beck. I was trying to edit it. My warehouse. Is that true? I don't remember. I remember sitting there under Goodner's awning, and they'd come pick us up with the truck. One time when we had that thing plumb full of sheetrock, and water got knee deep in it. How long did the harvest last? Did what? How long did the harvest last? 
about oh, three months. Started in July and ended in September. Oh, yeah. July the fourth was about the first of the maybe already over. And it would it would do it'd still be going sometime in October. Yes. Yeah. 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 We came home from college many times and went to the Marine Corps and family. If it didn't if if it had a lot of rain, then the broom corn wouldn't make because it just couldn't take the rain. A lot of times you get a sucker crop. Sucker crop. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah. yeah. And we start getting Valerie, what would you want? Lives. You know, when Dan brought me to Lindsay, it What'd was an experience bringing me to, to Lindsay. <laughs> and one of the stories, you know, you mentioned Burl Beck, but I remember, I want to mention Maxine Beck, because one of the stories I heard was she get up like at 3.30 in the morning to fill the water yeah. for yes. the them to go out and to oh, me yes. that was amazing as a okay. young woman to hear that you know. well you know a long time ago the women would get up and cook dinner yeah. All, yeah. I, I cut broom for one time and the women cooked dinner for us miss crawford was their name yeah james Ences, he lived there where that crawford lived at and his mom lived Harold and Sylvester. Uh, the crawford's out here around where no, not them Crawfords. These over here by the, you know where the uh, dairy's at? Yeah. Over there. That Crawford is over there. But anyhow, they, uh, I don't know what his first name was. You know where James Ince lived, don't you? Yeah. Everett Gregory? Mm -hmm. Straight south of Everett Gregory's down there? Yeah. The Crawfords lived there. Harold. Oh, yeah. Harold Crawford's yeah. daddy. And, oh yeah. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. She cooked dinner for us that time, yeah. I'll never forget. Yeah, we cooked a lot of meals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well that was hard too, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was. You know, back then they didn't have a lot of broom corn bosses. Mm -hmm. Everybody just get together yes. we Magnus. cut your broom corn and yes. everyone we cut true. somebody else's broom corn. They didn't yeah. have field bosses and trucks no. and all. You didn't no. everybody ganged up. We'd cut your yeah. head and head. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of broom corn bosses in, in around Lansing. Yeah. Yeah. Bradley, well, there's a lot of them. My granddad Hamilton was a broom corn boss before the war. Before the war. Yeah. Mary, yeah. do you remember old Kenneth Jones? Who? Mm -hmm. Kenneth Jones? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kenneth Jones. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we were the last day on his field. Old Kenneth had a cedar. He thrashed everybody's broom corn. Never had no trouble. Yeah. At his house, the last day the cedar breaks down oh, yeah. and they're out there working on it trying to get it going we're starving the death big old kids and i can't remember them three girls name gwen and gina gwen and gina and sherry yeah. but they got to going down in the cellar and bringing out these quarts of canned peaches <laughs> <laughs> well when they run out of peaches they drag out the green beans <laughs> I'll never forget that. Boy, them peaches were good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I had Uncle Cecil Freeman, y'all might have heard him. Yeah. He had a run for a thrasher. And a couple of heads got in there and he reached to get them and he got his arm and pulled his arm off. Oh. Oh. Yeah. You, you know what? Them kids would go out there and pick broom corn up around that broom corn thrasher. The tractor going, the bells is going. Yeah. I've never seen one of them ever get hurt. Oh. Yeah. 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 Well, well, you got to do it. Lots of guys got hurt feeding the cedar though. They did. Yeah. Lots of them lost yep. fingers. Finger. Paul Johnson did. I did guess. Lost finger on his hand. Mm -hmm. Never wore a glove on that left hand. Feeding the I've finger. never seen anybody get hurt of no. one of them. Yeah. Do that yeah. bucket you got sitting there? Huh? That bucket you got sitting there? Here? I'm not very big. I'm a lot bigger than I was when I was about. 12, 14 years Carrying old. Carrying his bucket around? My daddy run a broom corn field. Yes. And you know what I did? Yeah. Well, I told him that water she was a like that yes. across those tables to those hands. <laughs> yeah. Tom Conn, right? Well, Willie. Willie Conn. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I yeah. seen she had work and I knew I needed to get a hold of her. <laughs> 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 you need somebody to take care of. Yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, Willie Conn had planted a bunch of that next broom corn. And I thought he was pretty smart, and I thought he was kind of dumb, too. Yeah. Anyway, he played much of that next room for him. When he got all cut, he went in there and bailed out every bit, and the cows eat every bit of it. It's kind of sweet, like yeah. hay grazing, you know. Uh -huh. Yeah, they like it. eat that room corn just like, they, just like they wouldn't hay. I'll be nice. It had that sweet inside that stall. Yeah. They ate every bit of it. You know, they said Ben Denson. I never knew him. He didn't live with three or four miles from us, but I've never seen him. They oh, claimed, Huh? Oh, whoop on yeah. And he would take, and all summer he'd not drink a bit. 
But as soon as he got the last broom point in, he got drunk and stayed drunk all winter long. <laughs> 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 Broom corn left an impression on the seed. Seed pile. Yeah, you take that broom corn seed after you get done thrashing this kid, get out there and sack it up and take it home also and feed it to the chicken and hog. Put it in the garden, you know, yeah. more you take it. the best yeah. garden you ever seen. It would. Fertilizer. Except yeah. you'd grow another crop of broom corn. <laughs> <laughs> Do they have any? Insects or anything bug it? Just the rain? No, you got them stretched off. Sometimes there's big old worms that fall off and fall down the back of your throat. Oh, that boom metal was the worst thing there was. Oh, yeah. Man, they were vicious. Gray bugs yeah. You could have stopped. You could have stopped scratching and things. They just keep oh, right. going. Oh, the more you scratch, the better you play. I know it did. Yes. Yeah. I know it. Yeah, All right. Yes, yeah, sir. The question was me and you guys were running for it. Did you ever encounter rattlesnakes in the rust I never did. We never, like, all these years, I never did know of any. I never I seen a rattlesnake. The red corn and all that stuff. I never and did. I was told later it's because the oil fields coming in and drove them out of the hills. Really, we have them now, you know. I never I seen, seen a snake in there. I think them in our little you didn't the wild horse? Yeah. On that side? Well, you sure had them around here south of town, though. Yeah. Yeah, they was thick. Come up wild horse. You know, here a few years ago, one killed that kind of raised edition. Is that true? I didn't know it was in I see them at my house every once in a while. I live by the south. Yeah, I think they raised a little bit of my house. Did they raise it? Sure did. Oh, I was talking about getting. Ice yeah. up doing getting up the dirt off more in the face of the, of the ice. The, what do they call it? The wooden barrels, fifty five gallon wooden barrels. Yeah. Full of water. Well, they were fortunate they could go to the ice dock and get it. We was raised that Doyle America. They didn't have an ice dock. No. But my daddy was pretty creative. He bought a freezer and he would put pans of water in there. And he would freeze those cans of water and he'd fill those barrels up with water with ice. So, you know, I remember, I remember we put Dan Beck's. Of blocks of ice in that water. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That water would be so cold you couldn't drink yeah. it. Yeah. For a walk. Dan Beck hurled back his, his his daddy and he would, he was the field boss down there for the Crawfords mm -hmm. down south there with James Ensis and Ronnie Crawford. Delbert Crawford. Who? Yeah, Delbert. Delbert. Delbert Crawford. Yeah. Delbert yeah. Crawford. Delbert. That was Ronnie Crawford's grandpa. Daddy. No. No, grandpa, yeah. yeah. He was. And then now I walked from his, I, we rode a bicycle from his house, from my house to his. Then we rode a bicycle on down to Mr. Crawford's. And Burl and them was cut broom corn down there that morning. We got there about 6.30 in the morning. And I asked Burl, I said, Burl, you need a hand today? And he said, son, I've got grown men. I'm turning them down. He said, I can't do it. He said, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. So me and Ronnie, we went back and several years, he'd come in the feed store later and I asked him, I said, bro, you remember that? He said, I remember a lot of times. I wish I was just one head let you work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he's a very, very good man, bro, back to us. Yeah. I sure thought a lot of it. I guess he's the only man I know that had a better working wife than I got. She worked, didn't she? <laughs> 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 he bailed she bailed yeah. 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 She you know, I didn't know for years that Ray Newby and her and his wife, they were sisters. Yep. Yeah. James. Huh? They were James. Yep. They got a James Cemetery over there. Yeah. Went across several times, chased him on my own. Yeah. Yeah, I went over I didn't know that until Ray Newby told me about it. I told him about the family cemetery. They didn't know that. He said, Yeah, that's our cemetery. It is. Your name's Newby. James. My wife's name is James. It sure is. Yeah. Yeah, they were. Yeah. yeah. Miss Cunningham, do you have some questions? Well, I had a bunch of, you know, we had a whole list of uh, terms that broom corn people used. I was trying to see if we've, uh, but what's a float? I know what that is. I have my first yeah. 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 The trailer that you The trailer that you have. You know, when you were talking about breaking a while ago, last night I was thinking about uh, those tables, and I thought, well, how did that float run over that 
off table I call it. Tractor. You know, uh, how high was they off the, I, I can't remember how high. But did they ever Waste drag time. the table? They were by the way. Did yeah. you ever see them drag the table? Yeah. Well, see, I, I couldn't remember that. You want to see them? Of course. What can you use the image? Uh, so, what can you use the image in Claire? Emmett, Emmett was my cousin. Uh, okay. Cousin. That had to be the whole. First cousin. The uh, half uh, Yeah. His, his daddy and my daddy were brothers. Okay. Yeah. Lee. Lee. No, that's daddy's dad, Lee Cunningham. Yeah. I'm John Sinclair was her. Yeah. Yeah. I remember him. Yeah. <laughs> Lee, Jim, Bill. Well, what was the button board? Yeah. Do you know what a bedding board was? Yeah, back of the table. Earl D. The table hand. Boy, the table back of the table. The feeder. And a scratcher. Oh, that's what we called it. It came off the thrasher. The thrasher, we called them a scratcher. Is that what did y'all call them? Thrasher. You know, they used to shed scratch off the, uh, the woman that was taking it and handed it to the thrasher. You know, the tables. At the at the thrasher, you know where she oh, yeah. off the thrasher. The, they bumped the broom we, corn onto it. The straight, the, it to, yeah, to the yeah. Animals. You had a long table and you had a bunk a little yeah. board there and you bumped the the stalks to it to straighten yeah, it up. And you put oh, it on after that. it came out the thrasher. Oh yeah. And the lady usually we had a lady started yes, and yeah, she yeah, brought it against yeah. there and she'd hand it to the end. Yeah, she was uh -huh. a yeah, yeah. yeah. they called that the scratcher. Yeah. And then they well, take the barrel and it and yeah. take it on in the thrasher. Yeah. Well, what was a shelver? Who was a shelver? I did. My sister. I, I know everybody did. My probably. sister. Yeah. Not but they called, the, they called the they called the they called the piss ants too, didn't they? Yeah, they sure did. But I didn't know when to yeah. say that. But they carried it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they always put that going in there to put towards the sled. I had to go through there and dry it out. They always put the sled. Yeah, they always run the broom corn sheds east and west when the wind comes through there. It's always a draft under that. I don't care how hot it was, always good under that. It's cool, yeah. How many times did you do two tables? You know, in thrashing, how many times? Say that again. How many times did you do two tables of thrashing? We we done quite a bit down Rush Creek. Uh, now that would be a solid deal of broom corn coming through, and that scratcher had there to you have, get those. You have one thrasher, two tables. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they're feeding them from yeah. both sides. Yeah. 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 And it would sometimes be. Ricky Morse did. I'd see him shaking his head. Two tables. <laughs> <laughs> no, never but one table. That's all you I ever did. One table. Two? Beck, Beck had two tables. Huh? Well, Virgil Beck had two tables. Two tables? Yes. I've seen two tables. Have you? Yeah. I don't guess I did, but I know that. You didn't have to thrash them hit the clock if you did two tables. That's <laughs> true. <laughs> Stay in the seat. Yeah. You didn't yeah. always, yeah. you know, you didn't always have yeah, it, but sometimes you did. Yeah, being a car working out for a million now. That old long belt, you know, from here to the wall over there, and all I need is you'd have to get Anyway, it jumped off the pulley and hit Barbara on the leg and crippled her there for a oh while. She come off the track, you know. Yeah. You had to double it, you know, where it yeah. Yeah. Get, yeah. get it going right. You got it wrong and run backwards. Yeah. You had to double it. Yeah. Turn it. Turn it. <laughs> you know, I'm shaved here in that purple pickup there, yeah. there, you know. Yeah. I never did see a child or anybody get into one of them. Well, that's there because the, the guys would get out. Stay away from the belt. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. You know where this is at? Stay away from the belt. You know where this is at? Yeah. Miss Cunningham does uh, a bit. Yeah, that's down at uh, uh, straight west of the dairy. Yeah, it's, oh, really? it's uh, Ernest Parker. Ernest Parker. Yep, that's Ernest Parker. Yeah, that's his uh, it's family. On the north side of the road, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. I just wondered, is the blue yeah. shed still there? No. It's gone. Yeah, I Yes, I've heard all these stories from the Johnnies. I never was what you'd call a Johnny. I was a farm boy. Yeah. And you ain't even mentioned the hardest job with broom corn. Had him been mentioned. But it's, it's all about the cutting and the breaking and the hauling. And I've done all of those things. But by far, the hardest thing is 
standing up slats oh, and yeah. then stacking them back. Yeah. Yeah. When everybody else was, was back gone. in the field, that was gone. Gone. old Dale was hauling 30, 40, one, uh, twos that was 10 feet long and stacking them with splinters. Where did they get, them? Where did they get them slats at? I don't know where they come oh, from. They say, but I could. That's the hard thing. Yeah, I was like, well, it was the farm boys. No hands It'd be a mess if we didn't mention that there's a lot more to see about broom corn and the local farm industry and Lindsay history in general at the Ryan Taylor Dutton Family Museum here in Lindsay. Typically the museum is open on Founders Day each year.